Hello guys, welcome to this very short tutorial on the anatomy of the thigh. We are going to look at the muscles in the vessel that means the shoulder joint fiber in the thigh region. So to begin with, in the anterior compartment, you can expect to see a very long muscle, which is this muscle in this case, the sartorius muscle. The sartorius muscle is going to be the longest muscle in the body. It's going to originate from the ACS, which is your anterior superior neck spine, where you also expect to have attachment of the guanine ligament. And it's actually going to insert into the upper medial aspect of the tibia, together with the two other muscles which form the face and semineus, which is the gracilis in the medial compartment and the semitendinosus that is going to be a muscle of the posterior compartment, your hamstring compartment. And the semitendinosus in the posterior compartment is going to be originating from the ischial tuberosity, which is the common origin of most of the muscles that we find in the hamstring compartment. Then coming back to the anterior compartment, we've uh, identified the sartorius muscle. Then this lateral thickening of deep fascia, that is in the lateral aspect, is going to be our iliotibial tract. It is through this iliotibial tract that we have the gluteus maximus muscle and the tensor fascia latter are actually effecting extension at the knee joint. Remember the gluteus maximus is going to extend both the hip joints and the knee joints. And through this iliotibial tract, it's actually going to extend the knee joint. And looking at the other muscles, you accept to see, uh, you, accept the, you expect to see the quadriceps femoris quadrimedium four seps head. So you'd expect to see the vasti, the vastus lateralis, medialis, and the intermedialis, as well as the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris in this case uh, will be this muscle, and it's going to be having two heads. A long head which comes from the anterior inferior iliac spine, where you also expect attachment to the iliofemoral ligament, which is the ligament of the hip joint. And you also see a reflected head that comes from the acetabular surface as well as the surface of the hip bone that are adjusted to your acetabulum. And this rectus femoris, together with the other three vasti, they're going to insert into the patella. Then from the patella, you then have a ligamentum patella, in this case, this one, that is then going to insert into the tibial tuberosity. This quadriceps femoris will actually affect extension at the mid joint. Then if you look at the rectus femoris muscle, it's also going to cross the hip joint. And remember, a muscle, if it's going to cross a joint, it's actually going to cause movement at that joint. So you're also going to see the muscle flex in that joint. Whilst the sartorius muscle that we identified earlier on, it's going to do flexion at both the hip and the knee joints. Then um, if I open like this, this is going to be, we're going to identify the pectineus muscle, which actually originates from the pectineal line of the hip bone and inserts only the pectineal line of your of your femur. And the vessels that you expect to see in the anterior compartment of the thigh, you'd expect to see the femoral vessels. And remember, you're going to see a femoral artery, femoral uh, vein, as well as a nerve which will be outside the sheath, the femoral nerve, which will actually be the most lateral structure. And in this case, we can actually identify the femoral nerve as this one. Then the most medial structure will be your femoral vein, then this would be your femoral artery. The artery will actually be in the most lateral compartment of the femoral shift. Then in the intermediate compartment, we see the femoral, the femoral vein. Then the most medial compartment, you'd expect to see lymphatic vessels, which in this case, we cannot identify, uh, particularly your deep inguinal lymph nodes, uh, to include the, uh, the lymph node of Cloquet. Right. Then if you trace the thigh going medially, you'd expect to see the adductor muscles. And the first one that we've already identified was our gracilis muscle, which is this one. These muscles of the medial compartment will actually be coming from the inferior pubic rami, and you're also going to see the adductor magnus, the adductor brevis, as well as the adductor longus. These muscles will be innervated by the obturator nerve. The muscles that we identified in the anterior compartment were going to be innervated by the femoral nerve. And the femoral nerve, remember, is going to divide into an anterior branch and a posterior branch. The anterior branch will give you two business branches that will supply the eye, that is the medial and the intermediate as well as uh, branches that will also supply um, part of the muscle of the anterior compartment with the exception of the quadriceps which will be supplied by the posterior division which also gives you a fitness nerve that is your saphenous nerve so identifying the muscles in the medial compartment this is going to be our adductor magnus and the adductor magnus is going to have an opening within it which allows for vessels to pass through so if you look at in this instance we can see that the femoral the femoral artery and the femoral vein 
have now gained access to another compartment uh, which will be a population of force in this region and they actually passed through an adductor hiatus which is an opening for a defect in your adductor magnus. The adductor magnus originate from the inferior pubic ramus as well as some part coming from the tissue tuberosity which we say will be the common origin for most of the arm muscles of the thigh and it's going to insert into the linear aspera as well as the adductor tubercle uh, distally. Then you'd also expect to see the adductor longus and the adductor brevis, which in this case we cannot clearly identify, but these muscles inside here. Right. Then coming a bit uh, back uh, to the anterior compartment, these structures are going to be in the femoral triangle, and the femoral triangle will actually be bounded by the sartorius muscle, which is this, which is this muscle naturally. So you have the medial bone of the sartorius. Then you'd also expect to see the medial bone of your adductor longus this case which will be this muscle here and the flow will be gutter shaped and from lateral and medial you expect to see the iliacus muscle uh, then the psoas muscle which will all actually be inserting onto the lesser trochant of the femur then you also see uh, the petinias then part of the adductor longus as you call medial which is this part in this case then if you turn the lower limb posteriorly you then get to the hamstring uh, compartment where you expect to see the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, adductor magnus, its hamstring portion of course, as well as the biceps femoris. If you look at those muscles, only the biceps femoris will actually be going to attach laterally um, towards the fibula. All the other muscles will be coming to insert onto the mutual aspect where you find the tibia. And remember, we've already identified the semitendinosus, which is going to insert with the upper mutual aspect of the tibia, to, together with your pesantinous muscles. That is the gracilis and the centurious muscle. Then the other muscle that you see, this is going to be your biceps femoris, by meaning two, so it's going to have two heads. One head that will actually come from the tissue tuberosity, and the other head comes from the linear aspera. And if you look at the nerve supply in this posterior compartment, you would expect to see uh, this nerve here, it is going to be the sciatic nerve. And remember, the sciatic nerve will actually be the largest nerve in the body, and it's going to supply uh, all the muscles of the posterior compartment. Particularly, it's tibial portion. But if you look at the short end of this biceps femoris, it's actually going to be supplied by the common perineal portion. Then the other muscles that you see, this is going to be your semi membranosus. Then, um, if you look at this fossa here, that is going to be the popliteal fossa, bounded um, superior medial by the semi membranosus and the semi tendinosus. And then, superior lateral, you see uh, the biceps femoris. Then, if you look at the, the lower boundaries or the inferior boundaries, you expect to see inferior lateral. The lateral head of the gastrocnemius, the inferior medial, you expect to see um, the medial head of the gastrocnemius, which in this case will be larger than uh, the lateral head. So that's just about it in relation to the anatomy of the thigh.